Hey, welcome to Brighter Rays this week. We are looking at a study called Go to Joseph, and we are in Genesis 41, um, 38 through 57. So that's what we're looking at this week. So uh, go ahead and make sure you read that, and then I'll introduce uh, what we're going to be looking at this week. So we're going to pick up the story uh, with Joseph that we've been looking at, and he's standing before the Pharaoh. Remember, he's just... Um, been told the dreams of what it means. He's been uh, he's been given the message from God as to what the dreams mean, and then he has given his advice as to how they should proceed. And the question is, how did we get here? Well, we've been following the twists and turns of Joseph's life, and we've seen his life make some really dramatic turns. I mean, most of us can really sympathize with Joseph because we've been there. Joseph was a young man in Canaan, loved by his father, but hated by his brothers. And then one day, as he's obeying his father, he finds himself a slave on the way to Egypt. And he's sold at the marketplace. And uh, in slavery, Joseph shows himself to be reliable. And God's blessings are poured out upon him and Potiphar's house. But with one false accusation, Joseph finds himself in the Pharaoh's prison. That's all that it took to undo all of Joseph's hard work. Well, Joseph stands out as a model prisoner and is trusted with running the prison. One day, two officials who have been incarcerated with Joseph tell him their dreams, and God gives him the meanings. Three days later, Joseph is shown to be a prophet. He is receiving messages from God, but he is quickly forgotten about and remains in prison. Then God gave him two dreams, or he gave Pharaoh two dreams, which Joseph would have to interpret. <clears throat> but the thing is that no one else could interpret them. All the magicians couldn't. No one except this Hebrew prisoner. And the cupbearer remembered that uh, Joseph gave him an interpretation, and the, and the chief baker as well, and he got them both correct. He was 100% right. So Pharaoh, who was desperate to know, what his dreams meant, and since he has his wise men there that couldn't figure it out, um, he calls Joseph up from the prison. And Joseph explained to the Pharaoh that the interpretation of dreams was not something that was in Joseph, as if he had a special skill in that area. It's not by magic or by some mystical arts that uh, Joseph arrives at the meeting. Joseph explains that God must give the answer, and God does. Joseph explains the dreams and then went on to give what Pharaoh's response ought to be to those dreams. This is where we start the story today. What will Pharaoh do? You know, will, will he be, uh, believe Joseph? Will he you know, hear what he has to say? Is he going to respond favorably? Or will Joseph just have to go back to prison and say, well, thanks for the message, but I don't believe you. Or even if he did believe him, he could still send him back to jail. Well, you know, will the Pharaoh uh, respond in the way that Joseph said? You know, will he take Joseph's advice and do what he recommends? All these questions and more, we probably were swirling around Joseph's head. You know, what is this guy going to do? So he's sitting there, or standing there probably, awaiting the response of the king. Now, in our time together in this study, uh, there's three main ideas I want to point out to you. First, we're going to go look at uh, verses 38 through 45. That's tomorrow's lesson. Where we find the response of Pharaoh and Joseph's promotion. So we see that happening. Obviously, he's promoted. It's a good thing. And then in uh, 46 through 52, we find the theme of abundance. Uh, abundance in food and the abundance of God's blessings to Joseph. And then we'll finish our time together looking at uh, 53 through 57 as we see God's blessing the nations through Joseph as all the earth goes to him to find food. And so we see this repetition <clears throat> of life and death over and over again throughout really the, the, the first five books of the Bible, but uh, specifically here in Genesis, we're going to see that repetition of that theme of life and death, life and death. And um, so we see here life and death, and then we see life 
that God brings through Joseph. <clears throat> so come back next time and we'll start our first lesson here looking at Genesis um, 42 or 41, uh, 38 through 45.